Using our 19 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and remove our lug nuts. Let's grab our wheel, remove it and set it aside. Loosen the adjuster nut screws using a 15 millimeter socket. Using a pair of pliers, we just want to go ahead and loosen our adjuster sleeve, see if we can spin this back and forth. Our adjuster sleeve is rusted to our tie rods here. We're going to apply some heat to this here. Once we have these good and warmed up, we're gonna go ahead and try and loosen them up. So we're putting our pliers on the open split of our adjuster sleeve and on the top. And we just wanna get this to spin a little bit. Just breaking the rust free. And we wanna get this so that we can unthread our outer tie rod from the adjuster sleeve here. and it is broken free. Now on our outer tie rod, we wanna go ahead and remove this nut. We have our cotter pin in here, and this is pretty rusted. I'm gonna use a pick and just test the cotter pin here, and ours broke off. Our next step is to cut off and remove any excess. I'm gonna go ahead and use our 21 millimeter socket on our castle nut here. We're gonna go ahead and strike the edge of our knuckle here. This should pop out our outer tie rod end here. Eye protection is a must when doing something like this here. And if you prefer, ear protection as well. So I'll pop that out. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and loosen and remove our outer tie rod. I'll put some pliers on here and try and Spin that out. We got it loose, so we're gonna go ahead and work it back the other way. And we're just gonna continue this process till we can unthread this unit from the adjuster sleeve. I'm gonna go ahead and unthread our outer tie rod. We did apply a little bit of heat to this here. Now, if your outer tie rod unthreads with the adjuster sleeve, that's not an issue. You just wanna go ahead and put it on your bench later on and separate the two components. You also wanna count the amount of revolutions it takes for the outer tie rod to come out. That way, when you install the new one, you can count the same amount of threads and get a preliminary alignment setting. Now our particular outer tie rod took 28 turns to remove it. We're just gonna use a crayon and we're gonna mark this on the inside of our frame right here, 28. That way there, there's no guessing when we go to install our new part. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove our adjuster sleeve here. And to help us with this here, we're going to count the amount of revolutions it takes for this adjuster sleeve to come off. That's gonna help us with setting our alignment um, when we reinstall this. So we're just gonna go ahead and use a crayon. We're gonna mark this here. And we're gonna go ahead and count our revolutions as we take this off. Now we did apply a little bit of heat to our adjuster sleeve here. Try and spin this off. We're just gonna work this back and forth to try and get that rust broken free. And 
And we're just gonna continue to do this to loosen this up and then spin this off. Now that we have the adjuster nice and free, let's go ahead and spin this off. Now we can go ahead and take a small pry bar, put it right in the split of our adjuster sleeve and go ahead and spin this off. Now let's go ahead and remove our cotter pin here. We're gonna use a pair of cutters. I'm gonna try and straighten out the cotter pin here the best we can. We're going to try and get to the top of this here. It looks like our cotter pin has kind of pulled through quite a bit. So we're going to grab a pair of pliers and just try and wiggle that through. It looks like we're able to start working that through on the other side. I'm going to continue to do this so we can get our pliers caught on that. I'm going to switch over to our cutters here. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the head of it, pinch it, and just kind of rock it. And this is, we're going to use the nut as leverage to try and work that cotter pin. As we pull the top, it'll pull the bottom out. I'm just going to straighten these as we go. And our goal is to remove that cotter pin as a complete unit. And there you have it. I'm gonna go ahead and use our 21 millimeter socket and our ratchet. Let's go ahead and remove that nut. and separate these two units here. We're gonna use a tool called a pickle fork. I'm gonna put this up between these two parts here. You can see it's wedge shaped. So we're gonna try and work this up and separate these two. And when working this up, you wanna be careful not to tear the rubber grease boot here. and clean off our boot here, inspect it. Our boot looks like it's in really good condition. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that down and away. Let's go ahead and remove this cotter pin from here. We're gonna go ahead and separate this tie rod unit here from our pitman arm. So I'm gonna grab a pair of cutting pliers. You just basically wanna bend these tabs back and try and straighten them out the best we can. Once we get those straight, let's go ahead and wiggle those a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and work this cotter pin through the other side of the nut. So we're just gonna grab that and wiggle and try and push that through. Our cotter pin seems to be stuck in there pretty good. I'm gonna continue to work on this here. So we're able to get that cotter pin pushed through and it's coming through on the other side. Grab that, pull that out. I wanna go ahead and use a 21 millimeter socket on this here. Our lower radiator hose is in the way a little bit. We just kinda of push that hose up a little bit, put our ratchet on there. We really just wanna break this free. Once it's free, we should be able to spin it loose by hand. I'm just gonna switch over to a wrench because I was running out of room pushing that hose. 
So just using a wrench here, we're gonna go ahead and finish pulling this nut off. Good, let's spin that nut off and set it aside. I'm gonna go ahead and separate this unit here. I'm gonna use a tool called a pickle fork. What this does is this wedges between the two joints and should split those. You wanna be careful this unit here, once it pops free, it's gonna drop out. So be careful, watch for your feet, your face, anything like that that might be in the way. I'm gonna go ahead and just set up a little strap here to support the end of our unit here. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off our pitman arm. Don't forget to remove your dust cap here. That's a protector for shipping. Get this pushed up and inside and get the nut started. Now you wanna go ahead and push this up into the pitman arm Identify where the hole is for the cotter pin. And then go ahead and finish or continue to thread the castle knot down as far as you can by hand. And feed that through. We're just gonna put a pry bar inside the brake rotor vanes here and just position this unit where we need to have it. Gonna go ahead. You want to pay attention to the orientation of the hole through the stud here for your cotter pin. Go ahead and thread that nut on, and we'll thread it on as far as you can by hand. Let's go ahead and snug these Snug this nut down. Let's go ahead and tighten down the nut to our pitman arm here. Just get that socket on here. So we're ahead and hooked up our grease gun here and we put enough of grease in here, just enough where a little bit started popping out. And just wipe that up. Our boot is full and we should get some life out of this joint. Let's go ahead and torque down this nut here. I'm gonna torque that to 63 foot pounds. You wanna make sure that the notch in your cast nut lines up with the hole in the stud here. Let's go ahead and feed our cotter pin through. Now, if the cotter pin doesn't line up, you don't want to loosen the nut. You wanna tighten the nut until the next notch comes through on the castle nut, and then feed the cotter pin through. And at this point here, we can go ahead and we can fold that over. We're just gonna cut off our excess. Go ahead and thread this on. And it's a left hand thread putting this on. Now if this does start to get tight while you're putting this on and your clamps are loose, go ahead and put your pry bar in here and go ahead and spin that on. It's gonna install our outer tie rod end. We did put some indices compound on the threads. Now once the threads catch, you wanna go ahead and thread this on as many turns as it took to remove the old one, thread on the new one. I'll go ahead and remove our castle nut. You wanna pay attention to the position of the hole going through the stud here. Let's go ahead and remove our strap here that's holding this. I'm gonna install this into the knuckle. Go ahead and get that nut started and spin it down as far as you can by hand. 
And before we tighten down our adjuster clamps here, you want to go ahead and locate the split on the sleeve. Ours is right about six o'clock. We're going to use a small pry bar and we're just going to rotate this up. We want the open part of the clamp at the top. Do the same for this one here. Now let's go ahead and tighten these down. Gonna tighten down our outer tie rod nut here. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque that down to 51 foot pounds. And at this point here, you wanna try and locate the hole in the ball joint stud for the cotter pin to come through. I can go ahead and install our cotter pin. Now for any reason, if the notch in the castle nut does not line up with the hole in the stud, you never want to loosen this to get it to line up. You want to tighten up the nut just enough where the next notch comes through. And they can go ahead and install your cotter pin. I'm gonna go ahead and bend this up and over. And we're just gonna cut off the excess. Let's go ahead and torque this down to 42 foot pounds. And torque that to 42 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and install our wheel. get our lug nuts installed. I'm gonna go ahead and get all these started by hand and then we're gonna go ahead and zip them on down. Let's go ahead and torque our lug nuts down to 100 foot-pounds.